close your eyes and watch your breath. See if you can stay with the breath all the way in, all the way out, each breath as it comes in, each breath as it goes out. Try to keep your mind in one place. Take a couple of good long, deep in and, in and out breaths to begin with, and notice where you feel the sensation of breathing in the body. Wherever it's clearest, wherever it's most comfortable, focus your attention there and see if you can keep it there. If another thought comes into the mind, just let it go. You don't have to get engaged with it. It's like the sound of the birds. The birds can be out there, but they don't destroy your breath. The breath is here. Thoughts can come through your mind. They don't destroy the breath either. The breath is still there. It's simply a matter of keeping track of it. We do this for several reasons. One is to get some control over the mind. One of the big problems in life is that we all want happiness, and yet we do and say and think things that can cause us a lot of suffering. The question is why? And the answer is because we're not paying attention to what we're doing and saying and thinking. An impulse comes into the mind and it just goes right out your mouth, goes right out your body without much filter. And the mind itself is wandering around all over the place. If you were to draw a map of the mind, the mind's travels in the course of the day it would be this huge tangle all over the world. So no wonder it's causing itself suffering, because it's not right here where the decisions are being made. It's like being the, the owner of a factory who doesn't stay in the factory. The workers can produce good things or bad things. The owner comes by every now and then, checks out, and then goes off someplace else. And so of course the workers are going to get lazy, get careless. When things go on automatic pilot like this, you can't really trust what the results are going to be. So you want to be here in the present moment, watching what you're doing, watching why you're doing it, so you can exert some control. Now you notice keeping the mind with the breath requires some control, and it requires a few mental abilities that need to be developed in terms of any kind of control you're going to have anywhere in your life. The first is mindfulness, keeping something in mind. Once you've made up your mind you're going to stay someplace, you remember to stay there, you don't forget. Then there's alertness, watching what you're doing being on top of what you're doing and the results you're getting. And then there's a quality called ardency, you're trying to do it well. When these three qualities work together, the mind can settle down. If you want to think about something, it will think about that. If you don't want to think about it, you can think about something else. In other words, you're more in charge of things. It's not like we're meditating not to ever think ever again. We do think, but we want to think with some control, with some skill in how we're thinking. Because our thoughts can create lots of trouble if we're not careful, especially as the body gets older. This doesn't function right, that doesn't function right, doesn't ask anybody's permission. Things in the body just start falling apart. And as the end of life approaches, the mind starts scrambling around, grabbing at this, grabbing at that. If you don't have any control over it, it can grab a lot of trouble, grab a lot of suffering. But the mind is under control, because then you can keep it where it should be, thinking in ways that are useful, thinking in ways that are skillful, so you don't have to suffer. Even though the body ages, grows ill, even though it dies, the mind doesn't have to suffer from these things. That's the Buddha's message. And he's giving you the tools, giving you the skills you need in order to see if that's possible. So the skill we're developing, a very simple thing, just staying with your breath, has lots of implications. Give it a little time every day. You find that the mind gets more and more under, under your control, and you're causing less and less suffering for yourself. And in the course of that, of course, you're causing less suffering for others. The less greed, aversion, and delusion come out in your actions, the less the people around you have to suffer from them. So for your own sake, for the sake of the people around you, try to get some control over your thoughts.